Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is double, the idea being to double up the pop-up inside a card. And inspired by the design team and all the fun animals they've been making using our surprise ball pop-up, I decided to make this cute little lizard. Okay, I'm going to start out by die cutting and assembling two of the surprise ball pop-ups out of green cardstock. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. There are four little reinforcing tabs on each of the pieces that need to be glued down on the back and I like to use my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle and I am a fan of just clipping those so that I don't have to hold them. Then the next step is to work all the folds in each piece and they all get folded as mountain folds, meaning you're folding away from yourself. And that creates half of the surprise ball. And if you need to see this process go a little slower, you can watch the full assembly video for the surprise ball pop-up. I will link it at the end of this video. Okay, now it is time to do the kiss connection where I connect the two full tabs to each other, making sure that both the holes and the slits line up and then just clip it until the glue sets up. I am using a number 12 soft stretch rubber band and just getting that into that hole. And then I'm looking for the side that does not have the slit because that's the way I want to travel around the side of the surprise ball connecting those little half tabs. So the way these work is that you get the glue on the half tab and then you sit them next to each other so that each tab is actually connecting to the other half of the surprise ball. And one thing you do want to do is just make sure you take your time with this so that you get a nice straight edge along there. The more perfectly that you attach all your sides so that they are straight and even, the more perfectly your ball will pop up. And then I just move on to the next half tab set. And again, the adhesive goes on the half tabs. They sit next to each other. Make sure that's good and straight. Then that brings you around to the other kiss connection. So kiss connections mean that they attach tab to tab. You want to make sure that they're lined up nicely so that the holes and the slits line up. Okay, at this point with four sides connected, I can actually reach into the surprise ball and grab the rubber band, stretch it across into the slit and into the hole on the other side of the surprise ball. And this is a chance to check whether that rubber band is too loose or too tight. This one actually seems perfect. So those two sides in the back should be able to hold the rubber band side so that they can't invert. If they invert, then the rubber band is too tight. Now, since I want my cute lizard to spin around in the card so that you can see all sides, I'll just add a brad inside the ball and open up the prongs on the bottom. Okay, and then now I just need to finish out the gluing of the half tabs to complete the surprise ball. And I can go ahead and clip that ball closed if I want to help me get those lined up and attached. And then I just need to repeat that entire process to make a second surprise ball. For the second one, I did not add a brad inside. Okay, to make lizard feet, I started by just hand drawing three circles on the back of some green cardstock, then drew a line from the center of each circle, kind of to where they meet, and then made those lines a little thicker, and then just drew down to the bottom. So just an easy little hand-drawn lizard foot, and then I'm just going to take my scissors and fussy cut that out. I'm not even planning on erasing the lines because I'm just going to flip it over and use the clean side as the top of the feet. So collapsing down one of the surprise balls, and I did choose the one that has the brad underneath, then I'll add a little glue up the middle of the top sides and then attach the legs to it. And I'm having just pretty much the feet hang over the edge, and that way the finished lizard will collapse down into about a six by six square. Then I just freehand drew with a pencil again, just a curved tail. And where that is going to go is up on top of the surprise ball, so that as it pops up, the tail is up on top. And then I just went along the length of the tail, just kind of pinching it a little bit in the middle to give it some dimension. I decided to decorate the top half of my lizard with random yellow spots. So I'm using the hexagon that comes in the set and first going around with my scissors to just kind of make the edges less perfect, more spot-like. And then I just continued on with that top half of the surprise ball, just cutting spots to go around it. And if I crossed a seam, I did have to cut the spot. And then for the bottom half of the surprise ball, that pretty much was representing his belly. So I decided that should just be yellow all the way around and I just used the decorator pieces that come in the set. Okay, and the other surprise ball is going to be the head of the lizard. So I put a spot on top, hexagon on the bottom, and then one of those decorator pieces. 
Okay, and then connecting those two surprise balls together, I just need a generous amount of adhesive on the base in that one panel that's going to connect the head to the body. Now, as for which section of the head connects to the body, it doesn't really matter other than I've already added a decorator piece that I know I want to be the underside. So I'm choosing the side that's opposite that decorator piece that I already attached. Okay, probably the easiest is to collapse down both the surprise balls, then you can line up everything so that it's perfectly aligned on top of each other. It's that section on the right that is connecting. I can clip that to make sure it gets a good chance to set up strong. Now, if you didn't have a strong connection, as you can imagine, opening this card, the lizard's head might fall off and that would be kind of scary. So just use a really strong glue. I'm using the smallest crosshatch circle from the circles crosshatch set as the base of the eyeballs. And then I'm using the three circles that actually come included in the surprise ball set to layer up on top of that circle to create the big eyes. Back to the crosshatch circles again, and I'm using two half circles that are layered on top of each other to create the mouth. And then I'm going to connect that mouth just right below the seam there on the front of the head. For nostrils, I just kind of dug through my dies looking for a little small oval shape, and I found that the inner part of the lamb's ear worked perfectly. And then I just added a couple of spots to the head here and there. Now, one consideration about the eyeball placement is not to have them sticking up too far above the head. They can stick out to the side as far as you like, but above, just a little bit above, because of collapsing. It has to be able to collapse down and flip over. As you can imagine, if those eyeballs were sticking up too far, they would get crumpled as you closed it. Okay, for the card, I started with a piece of cardstock that was seven inches by six and a half, scored at six and a half and then a six and a half inch square. And then I'm using one of the stitched flaps from the flap enclosure die set. So I glued the tabs to the back of the big square and that then creates the six and a half inch square card with a side flap closure. I just went stash diving, so this paper is older, but I cut a 12 by 12 piece of floral paper into four six by six squares. And I'm going to start with the inside panel of the card where I'm planning on putting the lizard. So I have to figure out where to put the hole for the brad to go through the card. So I can collapse down the lizard, make sure his tail and his feet and everything are within the limits of the card. And then I can just kind of hold the die over the top of the collapsed lizard and then, you know, just kind of note where that was and then get the lizard out of there. Then I can use that die itself as the template for where to place the hole. I'll pierce a hole down through that pen mark and now I want to attach the lizard by putting the brad prongs through that hole. So important that I hold the ball tightly closed as I open up those brad prongs so that the brad doesn't have the opportunity to fall out of the ball. Then I get the brad prongs through the hole of the card and then open them up underneath. And then I can kind of adjust things. I think it's best if the little feet are kind of pointed outwards, sort of bent outwards, and that way he doesn't stub his toe as you close up the card. I decided the corners being rounded might look nice, so I used my half inch corner chomper. So with this style of attaching two surprise balls, you actually get that cool effect of the lizard popping out beyond the limits of the card when it opens. For a closure, I'm doing a simple ribbon magnet closure. So I've taken a six inch piece of ribbon, coated one side with a strong tacky tape. Then when I peel that up, I've got a piece of sticky ribbon. I'm going to kind of figure out where the center is without letting my ribbon stick closed yet and place a magnet in that general vicinity. And then as I close up this ribbon and stick it to itself, I'm going to have the ends actually straddle the edge of the flap. Okay, so once that's securely attached, then I can work on my second magnet. So it sticks to the one that's inside the ribbon. And then I want to add a glue dot to the top of that magnet, still letting it stick to the one that's in the ribbon, then I can close the ribbon and flap and that will move the magnet to the right position. And this is the time where I really want to test it because I could always stack another magnet on top of that before I add the paper. So if I didn't feel like it was strong enough to hold the card closed, now would be the time to adjust it. And in fact, if I go ahead and put my paper on the back of the card now, that's going to stiffen the card. It might actually make it where the magnet's not strong enough. So I just want to test all that before I finish my decorations. For this card, those two magnets were enough. I didn't have to add a third one. So I went ahead and added my pattern paper to the front of the card. 
Then my final six by six square of paper goes inside the card on the left. I've already decorated that with an extra little piece of pattern paper on the left hand side and a border, a couple stacked circles, a couple stacked happy birthdays. I also added pattern paper for the inside flap and then now I'll go ahead and add one to the outside of the flap so that will cover up the ends of that ribbon and make that more polished. There are so many great decorator dies that you can steal out of other sets. So this balloon and string came out of our explosion pop-up die set. And then I also used our border blends party, our word set two, and the crosshatch circles. If you need product links, always just check the description box below the YouTube video or follow the link over to the blog post. They're always listed in both places. And of course this technique could be translated into other types of animals. It just all depends on how you style it. My lizard technically collapsed down into a six inch square, but I didn't want to crumple his toes by having the card be too tight. So I went with a six and a half inch square card, and that is an envelope size that you can purchase. You will find a new card making with dies video on this YouTube channel on the first Wednesday of every month as part of our designer challenge. I would love it if you would subscribe. Also check out the blog post. You'll find the link in the description box below. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.